Hello and welcome to Dimension Quest. I recently built up a new workstation using a Ryzen 9 7950X CPU and Asus ProArt Creator motherboard with an XFX Radeon RX 6900 XT GPU and <laughs> chose to run Linux as my primary OS. After half a day of battling with Ubuntu 2204.1 LTS, AMD drivers, and DaVinci Resolve install workarounds, I wiped everything and had Fedora Workstation 37 installed and configured with DaVinci Resolve, recognizing my Radeon GPU within an hour. Since DaVinci Resolve is quite a bit different than Final Cut Pro on Mac OS, I downloaded the free training files and went to import the MOV files for the intro to editing project, Age of Airplanes trailer. Unfortunately, upon import, only a few of the files were even recognized by Resolve. And the ones that were, only showed the audio track. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Only six files here, and none of them are showing any of the audio in the little thumbnails or over in the preview window. I figured I had to be doing something wrong since these are sample media files provided in their training zip file. If you go to blackmagicdesign.com and click on their training link, you'll find the introduction to editing project files here and here. Both of these point to the same file. So I've unzipped this particular file and I've got it loaded up here in DaVinci Resolve 18. And as you can see, the video clips folder is only showing audio waveforms on the video clips. So how do we fix this? How do we get it so that these show up properly? Well, after a bit of research, I found that we need to transcode the video clips into a very specific format for DaVinci Resolve. Now, in order to do that transcoding, we've got 18 files there, I think, in the, um, the video clips folder that need to be transcoded. So I looked around and I found this shutterencoder.com application. It's available for Windows, Mac OS, Ubuntu, and just general Linux. So since I'm running Fedora, I downloaded this app image and I went ahead and ran that. So let's take a look at what this um, shutter encoder looks like. Now you can see here we've got this gray box here. What I've done is I dragged and I dropped all of my media clips in here. And I have selected the format that DaVinci Resolve needs. That's DNXHD. And we want to change this little drop down here to something that's more appropriate for the media that we have. So let's figure out what exactly we need to set, okay? Now, if we take a look at one of these files here, I'm gonna do one of the kind of important ones. That's the interview here. So let's right click on one of these interview files and we'll select properties. And we'll go down to audio and video properties and we'll take a look there. All right, we've got an 18 second clip. The dimensions are 1280 by 720. So this is a 720p video clip and the frame rate is 23.98 FPS, so essentially 24 FPS. Now, how do we determine what we need to put in here? Well, uh, that's something that I had to look up as well because I am not a video production professional. I do this stuff as a hobby, but I did come across this Wikipedia page here on the DNX HD resolutions. Now, since we're dealing with a 1280 by 720 video file and it is the 23 point blah frames per second. This is the proper table here. If we scroll up, we can see that we've got some other resolutions and you can see the different FPS and megabits per second, the minutes per gigabyte that these particular um, resolutions and settings generate. So you'll need to just use this to determine which one of these tables you wanna use and then identify the megabits per second. All right, so for my case here, the sample media files provided by that training zip are 1280 by 720. They are the 23.976, and we've got four different choices here, 92, 92, 60, and 43. So let's go back to our shutter encoder, and let's see what we have available here. For the image, we wanna adjust this so that it's the 1280 by 720. So I'll select that. Now you may have noticed that once I made that selection, this value changed from 120 to 60. So let's see what we have available here. 
60, 90, 90X, 75, and several others here. Now, if we look back on our table, we see that we've got 92, 60, and 43. Now, out of those available values, I don't see a 92 or a 43 here, but I do see the 60. So that's what I'm going to select. Now, if I were to simply hit the start function button without making any other changes, then all of these media clips, all of these video files would go through the transcode process and they would have a suffix added to their file name. And we don't really want that because later, during the training, we need to import a CSV file that will process all of these files based on their file name here. And if the file name doesn't match up, then they don't get processed properly here. So what I've done is I've made a couple settings changes. So you click on the little gear icon and the settings window will come up. First of all, I clicked on hide file list path because I want to see the files here rather than the entire path because you can see that is kind of useless. So there we go, got that set there. Now replace suffix by. Now if this is not checked, then a suffix gets added before the .mov and it's something along the lines of underscore DN X HD underscore and then whatever number you select here. So in my case, it would be uh, underscore capital D capital N lowercase X capital H capital D underscore 60 and then .mov. So I don't want that whole suffix added. So I have clicked on replace suffix and I'm leaving this blank here. And I disabled just the end process sound. All right, so these are my settings. And these are the settings that we want for the intro to editing media files that are provided by Blackmagic Design. And here I've changed the output folder to this transcoded folder right here. Let's just... Uh, double check that that's really set there. I'm going to go in here and where did I put that? I think it's under wind data training. Yeah, this is where I have it. Intro to editing, editing, and I've got that transcoded folder. There we go. So once I hit the button, start function, it's going to transcode each one of these files based on this encoding and this megabit per second and all the files will land in this transcoded folder. So let's take a look here. We've got 18 files, right? So let's go ahead and click start function. We can see it's going pretty quick here. These are all pretty short clips here. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Great, so this is done. We can go ahead and close out of or just minimize the encoder. Keep in mind that the folder that we're looking at here is the media files provided as is by Blackmagic. And if we click into this transcoded folder, this is what that utility just did for us. This is what it's supposed to look like. When I did this same training material on my MacBook Pro, I didn't have to go through any of this transcoding. The files were already just recognized. So this has, I'm assuming, something to do with the fact that DaVinci Resolve on Linux has a different set of encoders and decoders available by default, and we just need to make some changes here. It would be nice if Blackmagic Design provided the media clips that are compatible with Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. So if we have to do this transcoding process, okay, that's fine. At least give us a little guidance on there. I had to do a lot of Googling and spend a couple hours trying to figure out how to get this done properly. So now that I have some properly formatted files here, I can get rid of this other folder, video clips. I wanna go ahead and delete that. And we'll say okay on there. Video clips, good, that's done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and rename my transcoded folder to video clips. This way, all of the stuff that I have here will be matching up with the tutorial as I go forward. Now, one thing that I did notice here by default is that um, here on Linux, 
And in particular, I'm running Fedora Workstation 37. The media clips that get included here, if they have a, a person here, like uh, this interview piece, I'm not going to play the media clip here because I don't want to deal with any kind of copyright stuff here, but um, the audio that goes along with this gentleman speaking here, it doesn't quite line up properly. The lip sync is off. Now, again, this is something that I had to do a lot of research on because that video clip outside of DaVinci Resolve in different media players, it plays just fine. The lips match up with the audio, no issue whatsoever. So what do we need to do? Well, after several hours of research, looking through forums, looking through GitLab issues and just lots and lots of searching, I did come across a great post by, let's see here, what is his name? Thomas Kreider. He provided a solution that is something that you add to your Etsy profile in, in Linux here. So when your system boots up, the ETC folder has uh, several different files in there. One of them is profile. And I simply added a line to the very end of that file as directed by Thomas. Let's see here, let's open up my terminal window here. There it is. So this is the line. I'll include this in the video description here, but it's export pipewire underscore ALSA in all caps equals single quote curly braces space ALSA dot buffer dash bytes equals 131.072 space right curly brackets single quote. Now once I had added that to the ETC profile file, I logged out of my system I logged back in, I relaunched DaVinci Resolve. Lo and behold, these video clips here, the audio matches up perfectly with the video. So that should be it for now. I'll, I'll provide links to the Shutter Encoder, the DaVinci Resolve download page, the training download page, the wiki page that I've showed, and I'll also include a link over to the GitLab issue that has Thomas Kreider's solution posted there. Now, I'm a beginner with DaVinci Resolve. I'm just getting started with this stuff. It's been really, really challenging here, um, getting things going. I'm, I find it unfortunate that it's only provided for CentOS, CentOS, however you prefer saying it, as a default, um, but at least we can go over to Fedora and get things working. I would really prefer that it be available over in Ubuntu and like a Debian repository kind of stuff so I can just do things natively over in my preferred OS, but there's nothing wrong with Fedora. This is a great operating system and I think I'm gonna grow to like it. So as a beginner, I think I'm ready to start some doing my tutorials and videos here in DaVinci Resolve. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Hopefully I don't run any, any other major issues here. But uh, if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe. And if you want to get notified of any of my upcoming videos as they get released, go ahead and click that bell icon as well. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.